What's up guys, Reese here from Reese3D.com. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this very simple bouncing ball animation. Bouncing ball animation is probably the first animation that you learn. So let's get started. Before we start, I just want to tell you a little bit about the rig, right? So we have a very simple sphere, right? And it has a little control curve down here. And this control curve is what we're going to use to actually create the animation. If I select the control curve and I go to the channel box, you will notice that we have the basic transformation like the translate and rotate. Along with that, we have a custom attribute called squash, right? So this basically helps us to create this kind of an effect, right? So if I bring this to minus 10, it gets the shape of a water drop, right? If I move this to the other extreme, which is plus 10, it squashes to, uh, make a flat shape, right? So if you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just selecting this label and using my middle mouse button and moving left and right, okay? So we can also enter manual value. If I give zero, then it gets to the basic shape that was there before, right? In case if you're wondering how to do this beautiful morphing kind of transformation, it is called a deformation in Maya, okay? So we use a deformer called a blend shape to get these kind of results, okay? So I'll link a video in the description and also I will put it somewhere up here. So if you're interested in learning how to do that blending stuff, you can actually watch those videos. Okay, so let's get started here. So I'm gonna select this control curve and I'll use my move tool to move the object up Right? So let's just pull this up uh, in Y axis. So let me give a manual value of exactly 10. So you can see that we have the sphere pulled up uh, 10 units in Y axis, right? So I want to register this point as a keyframe to make sure that I'm gonna start my animation from here, right? So to do that, let's make sure that we're in frame number one in our timeline, right? And I wanna right click here and choose key selected. Now, when I do like this, uh, you can notice that the red uh, shape shows up here, right? So that means I have created keyframe just for that attribute. We don't want to create animation in all these attributes, which gets a little bit messy when we get into uh, making changes to that, right? So I'm just right clicking and choosing key selected. So that creates keyframe just for translate Y. Now just having one keyframe doesn't make anything. As you can see, there's no animation we need to create the second keyframe. So the second keyframe is going to be roughly somewhere here in frame number 15. And I'm gonna make this zero, okay? Now, notice what happens. Um, it shows a bit dull red. It is not a dark red, correct? And you will also notice that at frame number 15, there is no keyframe. So that means we have not yet registered the keyframe at frame number 15, right? So. To do that, we will have to again right click here and choose key selected, right? Now you can see that it becomes perfect red color. Good. And you will also notice that we have a red line here. So if I just scroll back up, you can see that we have an animation now. So we have uh, frame number one to have the value that is 10 and we have frame number 15 to have the value zero. Right. So that's our first animation. So let's say, for example, you don't want to do this um, creating keyframe every single time. You can actually turn on something called auto key here. So if I just click on this guy and keep that on now, whatever change in position that I do, it will automatically register that keyframe. So you can see that we get this red line here and we also get this little red rectangle here. So when you do this, you also need to be careful. If you make any kind of movement, let's say for example, I put it here at frame number 19 and I move it to a different place, you'll notice that we have keyframes creating here. So you can see that we get, sometimes we might get wrong animations that we did not want it. So you need to be careful uh, exactly where you're creating keyframes. Now, if you create a keyframe accidentally, you can also press shift and click and drag to select all those keyframes that we don't want, we can right click and choose delete. Cool. So back to just the two keyframes. So frame number one, we have the first keyframe and frame number 15, we have the second keyframe, right? So as you can see, we have the ball that's coming from the top to the bottom and hitting the bottom and stopping there. So if I just play this back, you can actually see uh, that's exactly what we have. Good. 
So next thing that I want to do is after 15, let's give some 10 frames or um, let's say, yeah, 22 should be fine, I guess. So that's uh, a little more than five. So eight or seven keyframes. I think eight keyframes should be fine. So here we want to do is we want to bring this up halfway. So that's it. That's going to be exactly five. So we're starting with 10. We're going to zero and then we're coming back at five. OK, so we have three keyframes. Let me just play that back. And you can see that it actually comes down and goes up. That's perfect. But you will notice that there's a bit of a rubber band kind of effect as if the ball is being pulled back with a rubber band up here, up there. Right. So that's not what we want. We want to get the feel that it's actually touching the ground and then with a force, it's going back up. Right. So to make this change happen or to understand this animation uh, path more clearly, we need to go to a place called graph editor. So to find graph editor, you need to go to window and there it is animation editors and graph editor. So if I click on this, it actually opens up the graph editor, as you can see here. Good. So uh, just to see both the uh, viewport and the graph editor, I can actually bring this up here and dock it. Perfect. OK, good. So let me just bring this down so that we can see both of them at the same time. So now graph editor is basically a graph that has got the timeline in X axis, which means the same timeline that we have here. So you can see that we have timeline here and you will actually notice this uh, uh, control going up there also and they're actually interconnected so if I move here it's going to change here it's going to change here so that's x-axis and that is showing our timeline that is perfect now in y-axis what we have is basically the value of the attribute that we have selected so in our case we have just one single attribute having keyframe which is our translate y so you can see that transit Y is being shown here also. So if I just select this guy and you can actually see that the green color is showing up here, showing that this is our attribute um, translate Y. OK, so in the graph, you can actually see that at frame number one, we have one keyframe and that is for the value of 10. So 10 frame number one and that's the keyframe, right? So the second keyframe is going to be at frame number 15. So here it is frame number 15, and we have a value of zero. That's correct. And then we have another keyframe that is going to be at frame number 23, and that is having a value of five. So that's between four and six. That is five here. So this is basically the graph editor. And what we can do is we can basically control um, the keyframes, we can control the values and all those things. Along with that, we can also control the way the, key, the movement is going to change based on from going from one keyframe to the other keyframe. So that's exactly what we want to do. So you can see that we have a very smooth curve here between the keyframe one and keyframe 15. So that is why we are getting this rubber band kind of effect, right? So what we want to do is we want to make this sharp. We don't want it to be smooth. Right. So to make it sharp, all I have to do is just select this guy and go up here to tangents. And there you will find different types of tangents. Right. So tangents are basically these two different lines that we have. We can actually pull them manually also, but let's just try to get the default one here. So let me try to give something like linear here. And you will notice that instead of being smooth, now it has become more sharp. So if I play that back, click play button here. As you can see now, compared to the way it was before, we have more uh, feel that the ball is touching the ground. That is perfect. OK, so next thing that I want to do is I want to control this bit more to make it more sharper. So to do that, I can actually select one of these handles and I can use my middle mouse button to click and drag. Now, when, when I do that, you can see that the other side is actually going to the opposite direction. So that's not what I want. I want to select this guy right click here and choose break the tangent so now they will move independent so when i move this guy up here i think that's perfectly fine make sure that you don't move too much because uh, if you move too much then uh, the value actually goes higher than 10 that's not what we want we want the value to go from 10 to zero but in a sharper or steeper manner now because i have broken the tangents i can actually select this guy 
let me pull this up separately. So you can see that we have more sharp appearance here. So if I just go back and play it, boom. Now you get the feel that it's actually touching and then bouncing back uh, up. Perfect. So now we have keyframe number one, keyframe two, and keyframe three. And what I want to do is I want to create the next keyframe. So that is going to be roughly, I think, 30 or 29 or 30. I think 30 is fine. So let me just bring this back and let's just give the same exact value. That is zero. Good. So now if I just go back and play it, boom. So it goes up, comes down and touches ground. That is perfect. So let's just do one more little bounce. So let's give, um, let's say four frames, pull this up. Let's give value of 2.5. That's exactly half of the last stage. And again, let's give one, two, three, four frames or three frames. Three frames should be fine, or even four is fine. And we'll give zero here. If I just go back, play it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Good. Perfect. So now let me just check here. And as you can see, Again, we have the smoothness here. We just select this guy. Select actually both of them, right click and choose break tangents. And then I can just manually move this up. Okay, so there you go. Not that much maybe. And again, I'll do the same thing for this guy. So if I just go back, play, boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's it. So that's our bouncing ball without the squash and stretch. Now, all we need to do is we need to add the squash and stretch here. Okay, so let's go back and we're gonna start from frame number one and I'm gonna add a little keyframe here for the squash and when it starts, it's going to be zero. No squash or stretch, right? So what I want is uh, just before it touching the ground, right? So just before touching the ground, that is frame number 14, what I wanna do is I wanna add the most squash, right? Actually, I can do it on the frame number 15 also. Let's give it a try. Boom, boom, okay, perfect. Let me just give it a try here, play that back, okay. Boom. Okay, that's fine. Let's just go ahead and make the squash here at frame number 15 or 16, let's give it a try. 15 should be fine, I guess, so let me just give a squash, oops. Now we don't actually need this graph editor, so I can just click that out here. Okay, so let's go to squash, and we're gonna make it perfect squash. So just one frame difference, so it's like that there, and then it goes down all the way. Okay, so let's just play that back. Boom. Okay, uh, let's continue the same thing, and when it goes up here at frame number 23, we want the squash to become normal that is going to be zero so let's just play that back Boom. okay Boom. okay good uh, if you want we can actually make that even before let's give it a try uh, let's see how it looks at the end and if needed we can make further changes so again, when it comes back down, again, uh, just one frame before, so that is at frame number 29. Let's just bring this like so. Not too much, maybe minus six, yes. And the next frame again, it goes to positive five, or maybe positive six. Let's try again, Do do. okay. Then goes back up again at frame number 20, uh, 34. Let's just bring this back to zero. And again, when it comes down, just one frame before, let's give minus, let's say minus 4.5, good. And frame number 30, again, it's going to be like plus 4.5 or plus 4, 4.5, good. And then let's just give a couple of keyframes to bounce back to something like, let's say, 
minus 3.5 okay and then again a couple of keyframes to go again to positive um, positive 4 then again one or two keyframes we can actually modify this afterwards so it's okay um, to go back negative maybe minus 2 or minus 2.5 and one more frame to go back to positive 2.5 and then again the next keyframe it can go back to zero okay so let's just play this back boom yes that's exactly what we wanted now if needed we can also make some fine adjustments here i can just give a little bit more space here just by pressing shift key i'm going to select these two guys and move one keyframe there yes and maybe just select this guy and move one more keyframe there you go let's just play that back go that is nice okay now if i go back to my graph editor i can also further make changes here to uh, the squash here for example you can actually select these keyframes you can use the middle mouse button to change their positions and stuff but i think uh, in our case it looks perfectly fine i don't want to make any changes i don't want to spoil it by making changes here so i'm just gonna get rid of this graph editor for now let's just get back here and just to uh, watch the final result i can actually go to right click choose play blast and there you go we go to options Let's just make sure that the scale is up and quality is up. Click play blast. So that's basically going to create a play blast for us to test out animation uh, outside of Maya with real time playback. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comment section below. See you in another tutorial. Have a nice day.